someone who only recently played through Super Metroid, I was very curious to see if Dread could be the 2D Metroid that took over the throne of Super, which has reigned since 1994. Without the nostalgia bias and with my love for the Metroid franchise, I was inspired to not only make a video on this topic, but a whole YouTube channel that will cover similar topics in the future. Without further ado, let's jump into what I believe make a great Metroid game and see which title have the throne as best 2D Metroid. To begin, I want to go over something that I find personally to be one of my favorite aspects of all video games, and that is the atmosphere and music. The experience that I had with Super Metroid is what led me to truly appreciate game design and all of the little things that go into it. It did such a good job separating each environment with unique themes and enemies that I really felt like I was exploring a new alien world. When you enter Brinstar for the first time, you take that elevator down and the iconic music begins fading in, you're greeted with a new environment and new enemies unique to this environment around you, and you're immediately given choices of where to go, such as these two doors. Having this choice gives you that sense of freedom within the world. The game is slowly beginning to open up around you, and as much as I loved that initial descent to Brinstar, I'd say the most memorable for me was the descent into Ridley's Lair. Not only is it the best experience I had while playing Super Metroid, but also one of the best gaming experiences that I've probably ever had. Right when I entered the mouth of Ridley and was greeted with that intense music, I knew exactly where I was going. The anticipation was killing me as I battled enemies unique to the area. This includes the Golden Kozo miniboss, who killed me plenty of times, and the space pirates who were guarding Ridley's lair. There was no dialogue telling me where to go, there was no sign saying, here's Ridley. It was strictly all known through details and the music, and this is pretty much how the whole game operated. When you let a game drive you strictly through its environmental detail and the music that goes with it, then you're left very immersed with the world around you and the experience that it brings. A little detail that I personally love in Super Metroid is the dead body found outside of Kraid's lair. Super Metroid does a lot of these things and they really start to build up and make you feel immersed within that world. These organic transitions within the game are what sets it apart from many other Metroidvanias. Fast forward about 27 years, and Dread opens you up in Arteria, and although the area felt natural with the rocky cave environment, it was still underwhelming when you combine it with the music. You can have a great atmosphere with not so great music, and vice versa. Arteria is well designed, but fell short when you compare it to the opening of Super Metroid. I believe many of you will agree that entering Cataris was a great experience. The fire environment, along with the upbeat theme, really gave me that sense that I had just entered a new hostile environment. And even though this experience did get me excited to explore future areas, I believe they all fell short when compared to Super Metroids. And although most of the environments were visually appealing, the soundtrack failed to bring the world alive in my opinion. Each environment was unique, yes. You had a water environment, a city, a vegetation environment, a laboratory, and more. But by the end of the game, I had felt they overall kind of just blended. None of them stuck out to me besides Cataris, and I do not have a specific memory attached to them as I did with Super Metroid. And I'm not saying all these areas were boring, because they weren't. But when you compare them to Super Metroid, I do not think it is even close which game had the more memorable music and atmosphere. That being said, Metroid Dread's praise has not come from the environment, as Super Metroid's has over the years, but from the gameplay, and more specifically, the unique experience that the Emmys brought. One of the first things I noticed playing Dread was how fluid it felt to play as Samus. Every ability I unlocked felt natural and was easy to use with the control scheme. Many of the enemies and mini bosses offered a great challenge, even with all the upgrades. I had to constantly be on the move and adjust my gameplay tactic based on the enemy in front of me. The best example of this is when you fight the twin robots. They took me by surprise, and it took me many tries to memorize their attack pattern before I was able to actually defeat them. The roots of the gameplay experience remain similar to Super Metroid, but if you play Super after playing Dread, you'll be able to distinguish the difference between the two. It is less fluid and slower. Some of the controls can be difficult to use, such as the timing of the wall jump, and basic enemies did not offer much of a challenge most of the time. Where Dread is great with its core gameplay, it lacks more with the organic progression. Dread felt more linear than previous installments, as there was always something preventing you from going backwards or blocking you from going forward. 
I felt this took away from what made Super Metroid so great, which is the progression and how you had to explore the environment and remember areas to find the way forward. And backtracking can be fun, because you never know what you might find with the new ability. Dread does not allow this until you basically have all the items in the game, which removes some of that exploration that Super Metroid offered. However, where Dread slacked in the progression, it did offer a fresh experience for the franchise, the Emmys. The Emmys offer a unique challenge that had yet been done in a Metroid game. They took the concept of the SAX and Metroid Fusion and built upon it. And although the Emmys lacked unique designs from one another besides the color, they still left me stressed out on many occasions. And I appreciated that each Emmy progressively got harder and required you to analyze the map to beat them, as you had to create distance that would enable you time to shoot. Although this experience could be stressful, it was great, especially with Dread's fluid controls. I know I'm giving Dread all of the love right now, but Super Metroid is still impressive from a gameplay perspective, especially when you consider it was released in 1994. And overall, the gameplay has not changed over the years, it's just developed. Before I get into the last topic, I would like to cover my thoughts on the story of each game. The stories are not a key variable in this video as the content within them did not have much of an impact for me as I played each game. I enjoyed both stories. Supers was told through the environment, while Dreads was shared through conversation with quotations, Adam. But neither one felt stronger than the other. My focus was on the atmosphere and music, the gameplay and progression, and my last point of interest, the bosses. If I were to ask you how many bosses you can name from Super Metroid and Metroid Dread, which would you know more of? Both games do have great bosses, so I'll cover a few from each game and discuss why they stand out. For me, it is not just the gameplay that makes a great boss, but also the music and atmosphere, the challenge, the design, the buildup, and the personality that they bring to the game. Let's kick things off with Dread's best bosses, beginning with the first one, Corpius. The gameplay was a lot of fun and he offered unique moves such as the invisibility. It was fairly challenging for how early it was in the game and he offered a menacing design. My only issue with him is the lack of personality he carried, as he was more of a brutish monster that offered a fairly good challenge. Next up, we have Kraid. I absolutely loved this fight. The setup for it was great, the music was memorable, the fight mechanics were fun, and of course, that editing cutscene displays Samus at her best. This is how you do a boss fight, and on top of that, bringing Kraid back and seeing the feud between the two in the intro made that fight that much more appealing. Lucky for Samus, he was in restraints. Experiment number Z57, love that name. Overall, this was the most fun boss for me in the game. I remember thinking how unique many of its attacks were, and mid-fight, I realized how much fun I was having when I was dodging the crescent-shaped projectiles while not trying to be blown into the damaging residue that appeared on your left. The atmosphere at the core of Cataris was fulfilling and the tone was set with a great intro to the fight. While the design of the boss was scary, he lacked the personality, and by saying that, I mean that they seemed to be purely instinctual versus how Ridley and Kraid seemed to have a lot more thoughts and motives. As the final boss in the game, Ravenbeak had four different phases that progressively got harder, which sounds about right for a final boss. Each phase was unique, and you always felt like you were facing a more powerful enemy as you always had to be on the counter. Overall, everything about this fight felt great, including the atmosphere. No complaints here. It's clear Metroid Dread has a lot of great bosses, so how does Super Metroid compare with its best fights? Now. I know Spore Spawn may seem like an unusual pick, but that music creates such an eerie atmosphere that sets it apart from the others. It may not be the hardest or most fun battle, but the setup was very memorable and created the standard for the rest of the game. I remember dropping down and discovering Krakomire waiting for me. It was a lot of fun and a unique fight considering you to blast him off the edge into the lava rather than shoot a weak point. His design will always stand out and the atmosphere made it feel like you were in his domain. And of course, you can't forget being rattled by a skeleton randomly dropping onto the screen on the way out. Unfortunately, probably will not be seeing him again. I'll be honest, during my first playthrough I did not know you could electrocute Dragon, and this cost me countless lives. I enjoyed that this fight required you to rely on your grapple meme as it was a welcome change of pace as most bosses required you to shoot a weak point that is usually the eye or the mouth. Dragon's design was great and the water was its home, which sets you up as the intruder. Hopefully in the future, we can meet Dragon again, as it was likely a high commanding space pirate. I saved my personal favorite for last. Ridley fights are always fun. He practically has you dodging attacks and firing your beam the entire battle as Ridley is purely offensive. Literally, you can shoot him at any point during the fight, except for when this happens. 
In addition to Ridley being a great boss, it is always a memorable experience when you're fighting your lifelong rival. I could cover more bosses, but that could be a video in itself. Overall, Super Metroid's bosses remain more memorable due to their unique designs, personalities, and the great atmosphere and music. Dread may hold the upper hand in the gameplay variable for bosses, but there is more involved in a boss fight than just the gameplay. I enjoyed the fights in Dread, but they did not stand out to me the way that those of Super Metroid did. Another example of great boss fights are almost any Zelda game. I'll specifically mention Twilight Princess, as each boss was built up through an entire dungeon, and even if they may not have been too challenging, their presence was felt through their very designs and compatibility with their environment. Bosses are always something to look forward to, which is why they are so important in the making of a great game. After covering all of these topics, you all might have an idea on which 2D Metroid game I believe is best. Metroid Dread's smooth gameplay and graphics, along with the debut of the Emmys, took the series in the right direction, but it was not enough to dethrone Super Metroid as the queen of the 2D series. The atmosphere and music remains unmatched along with the organic progression and fun bosses. My expectations were very high for Dread, which made it even harder to surpass its predecessor. But Dread lacked a few things that would propel it above Super. If we are to get another 2D Metroid game, I hope they take all of the gameplay elements of Dread and combine them with a rich and organic atmosphere similar to Super Metroid. As this was my first YouTube video, most of the clips I used were from the channels Sirloin and Capo Land. Going forward, I'll be using my own footage and will be covering various Nintendo and indie games. I would appreciate any suggestions and or feedback and I look forward to posting again here soon.